Hello, thanks for joining us for this latest Innovate TV video. I'm joined today by Bob Michaels and Rob Muddyman from ZV. Welcome, gents. Oh, thanks. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing well. How are you, Rob? Excellent. 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 Good afternoon, Paul. So you've got, you've got a Bob and a Rob. I have got a Bob and a Rob. That's wonderful. You, um, you guys have obviously been really active in this sort of AV over IP area um, for, for years now, really. One of the first, I think. Um, and it's obviously a huge talking area that we talk about huge growth area um you know you guys were one of the first to introduce it several years ago what do you think has changed on the landscape of av over p over the past few years maybe bob you answer that first uh we've we've absolutely seen tremendous change and and thank goodness for that right because if we go back to 2015 when when we shipped our first products and and several years even before that there was this conversation regarding the transition of av to ip Right. And we spoke about that for years and years and years. And I would say over the past three or four years, really starting just pre COVID, uh, the industry, I believe, firmly grasped the idea that that IP distribution, signal distribution can actually work. Right. And I think this was the result of educational efforts on a lot of people's behalf. Right. We spent years trying to educate people uh, in the marketplace. The integrators also took the challenge because in many cases, they didn't have the staff that was IP centric, right? They were AV centric. So they had to educate themselves uh, as well. And so we have seen the change there because people finally accepted. And the driver there was the fact that it works. Okay, so the, the, the proof was in the pudding per se. Mm -hmm. Right. They've they've seen installations, small installations, only, you know, three, four, five endpoints up to endpoint up, up to applications with, with over a thousand endpoints. You know? And it works and it works simply. And so, you know, as as one of our founders says, the, the Ethernet beats nothing. No, yeah. sorry. It nothing seems beats, it, nothing beats Ethernet. It, it seems crazy to be talking so uh, openly about things that work but <laughs> i mean <laughs> you're an integrator that's what you want every day don't you You don't want problems you want things to work as they say they should i say they do say they should <laughs> you just wanna, if you remember you know, going finish. back to the analog to digital transition remember when we went to digital switches and valens came along and a number of companies came along to 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 enable that to happen with digital switches it didn't happen smoothly overnight. It took several years for them to get that technology correct. And that was with the old proprietary matrix switches. I think with AV over IP, it's happened a lot quicker, actually. Yeah. I mean, the, the growth of AV over IP has allowed kind of standard infrastructure to be used in a lot of cases. And, you know, as a magazine, we've always been pushing standardization. It's a great thing. Integrators have wanted that for years. But with standardization, obviously, means there's a huge pool of vendors and technologies they're all vying for the same slice of action. What does that actually mean for end users? Maybe Rob, you asked that first. Yeah, so, so normally choice is a good thing, right? You've got a lot of choice, uh, you've got options and you can choose the best technology. But also I think what's happened is people did get confused because as Bob said, seven years ago, we introduced uh, our first AV over IP, which is uncompressed. There were companies before us that uh, had solutions, but they were all compressed. Uh, so we introduced an uncompressed solution, which on the face of it is perfect, isn't it? Because, you know, matrix switches, you, the, the 1080p matrix switches, you wouldn't have compressed data there and everyone would have looked, raised eyebrows if you said, I've got a product here which does compression. So we've moved to AV over IP and we're, we're not using compression. Um, but of course, there, there was this thing about the network bandwidth. So it did need a 10 gig network. Um, and then this whole thing came about with, you know, the whole one gig, 10 gig argument, uh, which is we find slightly ridiculous in, in, in many respects. Um, and it did end up causing some uh, confusion to end users and the general marketplace, uh, because now you had people saying, um, you know, on a one gig solution that you can have pixel perfect and, and zero latency, which isn't the truth. You know, it's 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 you know, it's it's marketing, really. Um, so with ZV's approach, what, what, we, what we've been doing is we've been producing products which uh, meet applications and the needs of, of the market. So we look at what the application is. We look at what the network is. If they're putting it on an existing network and it's one gig, then 
there's no choice. It's got to be a compressed compressed solution. And of course, the budget. But what we have done is we, we've got everything on one single platform now. And today, you know, we started off with that uncompressed product. We've added in compressed solutions now because the market, you know, required that. And, and for different applications, we've got different products, as simple as that. But it's very, very confusing, I think, Bob, isn't it, for, for, for end users and integrators. And you know, we even see situations today where um, end users will invest in uh, an LED wall, an expensive, a big investment for them. And, and then the integrator or the consultant is designing to put compressed video on it. And it just doesn't just doesn't sit right with us. You know, so yeah, in that case, we we like to have a conversation to try and uh, make them aware of the options. And actually, you you don't need to compress the video. You, know, sure. you could put perfect video onto that LED wall and, and get the best out of it. Yeah, yeah, Rob, you mentioned you mentioned confusion there. It leads nicely onto the next question. Really, I mean, do you think maybe to you, Bob, first, uh, are users aware of the differences between the products in the sort of AVRP sphere? Or do you think they believe that maybe, you know, seeing the words Intel inside means that all devices are the same? Are you seeing confusion out there, do you think? Certainly, yes. Uh, there, there still is confusion about, as Rob uh, mentioned, the one gig versus 10 gig totally contrived argument, and, and that's not what it is, right? The, the end user should ultimately define what the requirement is, right? This is what we need, and it's up to the manufacturer and the integrator to make a determination as what's best going to suit that. And if you only have one solution that you can present, you don't even need to listen. In fact, you don't because here's the answer to your problem. And that's just not the case. But, but specifically to your point, say for example, on SDVOE, you know, all SDVOE devices are, are not made the same, right? They can interact, they can interact to the lowest common denominator of, of, of what that one particular product is capable of okay but they are certainly they are certainly different for example many customers many providers of sdvoe technology have you know two models okay an hdmi in and hdmi out um and they have maybe four SKUs or maybe eight SKUs because they have fiber and copper okay for but for us for example we have almost 200 SKUs for sdvoe type devices we have every input that you can think of. We have every output that you can think of, right? We have medically approved devices. We have fiber, we have copper. And so they certainly aren't the same as, uh, as perhaps a, a product that is just simply ODM from, a, you know, from an overseas manufacturer. You can't have that knowledge. And for us, one of the tremendous strengths that we bring to customers in the marketplace is our practical experience with the product. And that is a differentiator, right? Uh, you know, many people still think that if they buy a laptop and it says Intel inside and one is $500 and another one is $2,500, you know, it's not the same. It's certainly <laughs> not going to be the same, right? So, so why would you think that just because it has a particular chipset inside a product that it's going to perform to the same level of capability, right? This is where education comes in. This is where we try to uh, continue to educate the market. Yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds like uh, AVIP is a sort of ever moving target. So it's great to, to get an update from guys like yourselves who are right in the middle of that kind of, um, that, that battle, if you call it that at the moment. Um, Rob and Bob, um, many thanks for your time and been lovely to talk to you. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you, thanks, Paul.